Hello, Eric Eisenhut here with the GK Icon Coaches Pale Discussions. Today, the topic is leadership with the pool keepers. With us today, we are fortunate enough to have two coaches. We have Matt Piscaglia, who is the goalkeeper and assistant coach at the University of Pittsburgh in Greensburg. He was on the PA West ODP coaching staff, still is on the ODP PA West coaching staff. And last year, Matt was our goalkeeper coach of the year, as voted on by his peers. We also have with us today, Mr. Todd Holford. Todd is currently the goalkeeper coach at Real Salt Lake within the MLS. Prior to that, Todd was coaching with the New York Red Bulls, and he had stinks in the MISL as well as the USL2. He has head coaching experience in the NCAAs, and he also had stints with our United States youth national teams. Fellas, welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I'm glad to have both of you on here. Todd, I'm going to jump right into this with you if I can. Can we get right into, let's first of all define not only leadership, but specifically with the goalkeeper position. What are you looking for from your goalkeepers? Yeah, I, with, with, with the goalkeepers and being a leader, I mean, uh, when I think of a leader, it's somebody that's very dependable. Uh, when you're looking at a goalkeeper, you need to have somebody that's that very dependable, especially when there's moments of chaos, you know, and good, good strong leaders are going to kind of lead you through that chaos. Uh, they need to be a very good organizer, uh, you know, and minimizing opportunities before they become them. Uh, and that includes, you know, very strong, confident vocal tones, you know, and, and that's somebody that's got that authoritative kind of vocal tone is, is a natural leader. Um, you know, and I think as well, you know, to, to be that leadership and goal, you got to be willing to learn from mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to concede goals. Uh, do you have that willingness to learn from the mistakes and uh, put your hand up when you, do, when you do make one? You know, and for me, that's kind of, you know, the three big keys for a leader that I'm looking for in a goalkeeper. Uh, you know, are they willing to do the dirty work? You know, are they willing to be the first one on the field, the last one to leave? Uh, you know, when the conditions maybe aren't optimal. You know, they're not making excuses. They're just going out and they're doing their job and they're helping the others, you know, and, and uh, the, the players in front of them do their jobs to their maximum potential as well. So for me, that's kind of defining of a, of a goalkeeper leadership. Cool. Matt, what, um, let me ask you this. When would you begin to look for those qualities emerge from a younger goalkeeper? I, I would say as soon as possible. If you have, especially a younger goalkeeper, um, that is deciding, yep, I want to play this position. This is where I want to go with it. You know, I think you start to get those qualities out of them as soon as possible uh, just so they can continue to build on it and just become more of a leader as they grow. Um, you know, obviously when we're on the field, um, using our voice is part of the position. So that re immediately just strikes some leadership out of uh, whoever may be in the goalkeeper role. Uh, but just like Todd was saying, you know, off the field stuff too, you know, can you be someone that the rest of your teammates can turn to. Uh, and I think that just helps the relationships on the field as well uh, when it comes to the tougher times. You know, you feel more comfortable maybe uh, talking to one of your backs or one of the other players like, hey, I saw something. Um, maybe, you know, next time can we fix this? Can we change this? Can we try something different? Um, I just think overall uh, the more uh, comfortable you can be with the, the rest of your team, the more of a leader you'll see to – be from them um and then that can easily translate to on the field I, I believe as well nice todd when do you two things one can those characteristics that you mentioned the organizing the vocals you know can they be taught and if so when do you start teaching young goalkeepers these characteristics and how yeah i mean i think anything can be taught um you know to a certain extent uh, i think there are something uh, you know the the, the that, that, that kind of saying, you know, natural born leaders, you know, there are people that are a little bit more naturally uh, leaders, uh, but you know, there, there can be things that can be enhanced through time. Uh, I, I'm not one to be kind of picking out, okay, what, at what age? Cause I agree with, with what he said, you know, if you look at a first grade class, there's a leader in a first grade class. So there's, there's no real age that, oh, they've got to be 10 years old. They've got to be 12 years old before you can expect them to become a leader because it doesn't matter what age. There's always, if you've got a group, a small or a large group, there's always going to be people that are going to kind of branch out 
and be the leaders of that group in one way or another. So uh, I, I would never put an age on. I, I agree that, you know, the earliest we can, you know, try to bring some of those traits out of them if we possibly can, you know, in ways that I would do that, you know, I ask a lot of questions, you know, in sessions with when I'm working with young ones, you know, I try to put them in situations and it might be even in a warm up activity, you know, and saying, okay, uh, Johnny, Sarah, I want you to take the group for a little jog, a little stretch. Uh, in, and, and those are things, you know, over time, you know, when you're, when you've got a group of four or five goalkeepers potentially that you've kind of led them a little bit, and then you give them a little bit of rope to become that leader, you know, and, and a warm up is just a perfect example. You know, you've, you've run them through a warm up many different times. And now after maybe six, seven, eight times, you're like, okay, John, Sarah, it's your turn. And to see if they can kind of, you know, do the same sort of things that you've done and then encourage them along the way, you know, and say, Hey, did you, did you do this? Or, uh, could you say it maybe this way, you know, and I think kind of instructing them a little bit at the younger ages of how to communicate, you know, and a lot of that, in my opinion, is, is vocal tones. You know, if you've got that strong vocal tone and that's something you can teach very, very easily, you know, and, and I'll usually, you know, you put it in kind of goalkeeper terms, you know, and I'll kind of make the jokes of saying, if I come off for a ball and I'm like keepers versus keepers, mm -hmm. I've said the same information, but I've done it two completely different ways. And it kind of explaining them to them. Now, you know, of course, the, you know, when you say the second way, they all kind of jump and oh, they get scared a little bit. But that's that kind of teaching mechanism to them to say, look, I've given you the information in two distinct ways. Which one caught your attention? Which one do you think uh, had a little bit more sense of control with the person and giving the information? So I think that's an easy way to kind of describe and begin to develop that with the young players, where you're teaching them moments of how to communicate, how to gain control over situations. Uh, and, you know, especially with the people that are kind of in front of you and, and how to instruct. Yeah, I, I want to go back to what you mentioned about the warm-up. Uh, that's something that Maddie and I do all the time with our kids, where we'll give them the first five, 10 minutes of a session. You know, they got to get there early, you know, because I don't, I hate wasting an hour session with 10 minutes of them doing some dynamic. Get that done, get here early and do that early, right? But while I'm ending a session, or while we're ending a session, if I'm running it with Matt, we'll say to the other group, hey, Larry, Sue, you two go lead the group in a dynamic. And that'll rotate every week. Those, so they always get that opportunity to lead in that, and they hate it. When it's new to them, they do. They're like, but and it's with their buddies. They're not doing anything they haven't done the week before. They all know the basic dynamic movements we're asking them to do. But they still, man, there are some kids that are, have a tough time just leading in that, that setting. So getting them comfortable to lead a team in the most basic environments is, I think, a great place to start. I love how you said that. Um, yeah. The other piece, well, go ahead, Todd. And I, would, and I would kind of, you know, kind of add to that is, you know, that's essentially, I, I, and in my opinion, you know, how we're, our jobs as goalkeeper coaches is kind of weeding out those kids. You know, and I hate to say the word weeding out, but the ones that are going to really make it as a player at a, or as a goalkeeper in, in this particular instance, you know, in the higher levels are the ones that are going to embrace those roles. And they're going to take those situations and they're going to flourish in it as opposed to being afraid of it. And if you are afraid of it, probably your, your ceiling is going to be pretty low on, on, on the level you're going to be able to play. So for us as 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 goalkeeper coaches in this, you know, model, you know, we've, we've got to look at those ones and then enhance their leadership abilities even more, you know, and the ones that really don't take to it probably aren't going to make it anyways. Um, you know, can we enhance them a little bit? Obviously, yes, but it's those natural born leaders as well that we really want to flourish and we really want to enhance because those are probably the ones that are going to get to the higher levels in a, easier road so to speak not that the others cannot but it might be a little bit bumpier a road for them I, I always say it's easy it's easier to have someone who does the, a lot of that and rein them in compared to someone who's just deathly silent and try to get them out to do more um, and Matt I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna push this one to you um, we talked about obviously the keeper command and the tone in particular a lot of tone and a lot of communication has to do with this topic of, of leadership what what are some of the other what are some of the other phrases that you want your GKs to lead with 
at, and I'm going to bump the age group up now. Let's get out of the, like the academy level. Let's start to get into you know, the, the younger teen levels, 13 to 16 years old, where they're starting to get a little bit more serious about the ball that they're playing. And not, not only is it on-field leadership, we mentioned this already, we're starting to get involved more with off-the-field leadership. What's that look like? And also, what are the tones that uh, – some of the phrases that you might look for those goalkeepers to utilize? Yeah, I mean, so we start with keeper, obviously. I think once you get to this age, uh, that should be one that we have mastered of sort. Uh, but then, you know, you get in the keeper in a way, you start talking about um, other short commands that you can use with your team while we're defending, while the ball's in our own defending third. Um, I always like to use shoulders. So if I'm telling one of my backs, it's like left shoulder, right shoulder, uh, that gives them, you know, just the detail where I'm, where I'm seeing something. If it's somebody that needs to be stepped to a little bit, close the space down a bit. Um, but then once we start to get to these older levels, we start to understand the game a bit more and how, as a team, I would hope as well, you know, how we're trying to defend um, and what we need uh, to get out of those outcomes. Um, and then once we get to off the field, you know, I think that if we could go to training, for example, if you're, if training's over, um, like we already touched on it, but you know, you're the last guy there, you're helping clean up the, the, the stuff that's on the field, you know, you're grabbing the cones, the balls, stuff like that. Um, and then if, you know, if you have that, that cool down at the end of training uh, that you may have, you know, are you leading that? Are you taking the guys through that? Um, and then how are you just being that voice after training? Um, to just kind of uh, close things off for that, for whatever you may have done. Uh, and again, just like we said earlier with the games too, like you, know, you can touch on some of the things there too in more of a conversational um, piece instead of just being so direct like you would on the field, but just be like, hey, you know, I saw this uh, while we were playing, maybe short side or something, you know, maybe next time you want to try to do this and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, there's tons of situations, obviously, on what could be said specifically. Um, but it, I think it comes with the understanding of the game as well um, as, as you develop as, as a player yourself. Yeah, I like how you mentioned the tactical piece, because that has a lot to do with the organizing that Todd mentioned earlier today. Uh, Todd, what are you looking for from a uh, leadership role, your goalkeepers in the locker room, off the field, before games, halftime? What are you looking for them to do? Or what do you look, what, what would you, what would, what would make you say, Yes, that's what I'm looking for in that setting. Yeah, the, for me, it, it's that personality, that big personality, you know, that the one that, you know, whether it's off the field and they're at home and they're very, very careful what they say on Twitter. They're very careful what they say on Instagram or Snapchat or, you know, and they're always in a very, very professional mode when it comes to social media. Uh, they're the ones that, you know, if we're on the road, we're in the hotels, they're, they're always following the rules. You know, they're always in their, their rooms. They're going to bed at the appropriate times. They're eating the right meals and the types of food. Uh, and they're setting that kind of good example. For, for not only the young players, but all the other players that are in the locker room. For me, that, that's, that's, a, that's being a leader, you know, and it's kind of that lead by example type of mode. You know, it's, the, it's not only the work ethic on the field and the passion and desire, but it's the willingness to do all the other things, you know, and be that, that voice uh, as well, um, you know, whether it's in the locker room at halftime, you know, giving their information, uh, like I said before, you know, putting their hand up if they do make a mistake. Uh, but also being that kind of passionate yet constructive criticism or patting somebody on the back when they're doing something well. You know, that, that's, that goes, I think, just as far. And I think we've got to be a little bit of that psychologist in a way uh, and understanding if I yell and scream at you, Eric, and you're the person that when you get yelled at, you're going to curl up in a little ball. Well, if I don't understand that's the way you, your personality works, and I just keep on going at you, well, I'm not going to get the most out of you. So I have to have a good understanding of what motivates you, uh, as well as Matt, as well as every other player on the field. And that's on and off the field. So that part of being a leader is, can I maximize, you know, by the way I lead, the way I communicate, can I maximize everybody else's performance on the field and off the field? Yeah, I love that, man. And, and I love that a lot of it's relationship management. Right. With, with the with the players on the team. And Matt, I'm going to come to you with this question then, because we've been speaking a lot to player player relationship. What's the relationship that that goalkeeper, that leader should have with the coaching staff? 
and let's talk specifically at your college level. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll, I'll start with this. Um, you know, it, you hear it enough, but it's that the goalkeeper is like the coach that's on the field. Um, you hear it time and time again, but the goalkeeper can see everything that's in front. Um, so just kind of having that knowledge to be able to voice that while you're, while you're on the field playing um, can be vital in a goalkeeper's, um, you know, toolbox, we'll say. But uh, with, with your um, – lost my word there. With your uh, – with the coach, I lost the one word there, the um, <laughs> relationship, right? Yeah, relationship with the coach. Um, you know, you need to be sort of on the same page. Um, obviously, every – as you step into college, um, obviously that goes into your uh, decision-making is uh, with what school you might pick is what, what that coach – uh, how he sees he or she sees the game, um, and what their um, what their plan of attack is, and how they like to play the game. Um, so obviously, if you can be on the same page with them, uh, that helps with what you're trying to say on the field and how you're trying to communicate to your players. But then, um, as well, I mean, it, it helps to be in a sense that assistant coach off the field as well. Um, so you can almost uh, feel comfortable with being in a leadership position to help your players uh, and off the field stuff. So if we're talking college, maybe it's stuff with studies, especially, um, you know, I've experienced this myself. Uh, you know, if you had guys in the same class as you, you're always trying to help each other out. You know, if it is after training, uh, we had study hall hours that we would have to do. Uh, but if you're especially in the same class as someone, you're trying to help each other out just to uh, make sure you have all your work done, studying for the tests and stuff. But um, it's just being that leader off the field, like we've talked about, um, so if you're in a setting where the players almost feel like they have one of their coaches there, uh, in wherever that might be, um, so you're, you're almost looked at in, in that, in that sense. Todd, how does that change when going from the college game to the pro game, that relationship between the goalkeeper and the coaching staff? Um, I think it's pretty similar. It might become a little bit more enhanced, you know, at the, uh, at the pro game. Uh, but it's not just for the goalkeeper. It's going to be everybody else. You know, when you get in kind of climb those, those levels, uh, personalities are always going to get bigger. You know, there's always going to be a lot of different things going on because now you're getting pulled a lot more from the media than your coaching staff. Uh, I think just as you get into that pro game, the communication aspect is going to dramatically increase. So, um, you know, whether it's, the communication between goalkeeper and goalkeeper coach, mm -hmm. but it's also from goalkeeper and all the other assistants and the manager or the head coach. So I think that just becomes more and more enhanced and it's more of a literally a daily conversation, you know, whether it's from a tactical uh, piece or, you know, what we're doing in the course of the session uh, or it's something that we're doing on a game day or preparing for a game. You know, we're always looking for that goalkeeper's opinions uh, comments because at the end of the day it's the goalkeeper that's actually on the field that sees everything and they've got a different viewpoint than we do on the sidelines or from the training pitch so we're always looking for that informational piece from the goalkeeper you know from their perspective which that's going to help us make up make decisions but they might see something and now we make a tactical adjustment based on the information that they've provided with us because it's something maybe we didn't see uh, or we didn't think of or whatever, but they were in the trenches and now they bring that to the forefront and we can maybe make some adjustments from it. We do a lot of that, Todd, with our goalkeepers when it comes to set pieces, corner kicks, wall setups, um, you know, certain field types, certain conditions. You know, we might play a little more basic out of the back if it's a sloppy, wet field, uh, more direct, so to speak. So we're, we do that a lot with, with, our, with our goalkeepers. We're always asking for their opinion. And we might not always take what they say and utilize it. And from a, from a player's perspective, that needs to be understood because just because you have a voice doesn't mean it's going to be in, in st instilled into the game plan or work on work with the coaching staff. So I think there's a give and take there. But the opinions on the – what the, if you actually – if you have an intelligent goalkeeper, um, it, 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 it's needed. And I, I think I'm just to emphasize what you said, you both said, it, it, it's 100% right. There needs to be – they need to be the voice on the field, but also that, that – communication from the coaching staff to the team and in times when the, when the coaching staff can't be there. And that might be everyone's in the locker room. Coaches are still out in the field talking to the ref or something at halftime. That might be 
off the field in a restaurant to, to Todd's your point of being in the hotel or something. Like, so it's, it's that coach's presence when the coaches aren't there is, is a great, I, I love how you guys were, were speaking to that. Um, yeah, I think a lot of that Eric can, can yeah. come from us too, uh, you know, as coaches, you know, and it goes back to that goalkeeper, goalkeeper, coach relationship. You know, I know I'm always instilling some of that leadership role in my goalkeepers by asking them the questions. What did you see? You know, it might be at halftime. Okay, what, what do you think? What do you think was happening? Well, that's helping, I think, bring some of that leadership ability out of them that they feel that they can have a voice. And especially with a younger goalkeeper. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you look at what we have now with a Nick Ramonda who just retired at 41 years old. And we also have a goalkeeper here that's 18, 19 years old. Two contrasting differences in leadership abilities just because of, you know, it's a 20 year age gap. So uh, I'm going to expect a Nick Ramondo to come to me with some of his leadership and vo voice more so than that 19 year old. So I'm going to have to go to that 19 year old and help bring some of that leadership out by asking him a lot more questions and, and giving him kind of that freedom of feel like, Hey, I can come to you. I can come to you with my opinions. You know, and I can, you know, come to you and say, look, this is what I'm seeing in training, or I think we need a little bit more of this, or I need a little bit more of this, or the team needs a little bit. Of Again, it might not happen. It's like, you know, I use the example with young kids, you leave your training field, and now you're on the way home with your mom and dad, you might say, mom, dad, I'm really hungry for some ice cream. Doesn't mean you're going to get ice cream on the way home. But at least you vo vo vocalized your opinion that you would like to have some ice cream, you might not get it. But at least mom and dad understand that you would like some. And maybe they will stop and get some, or maybe they won't, but at least you voiced your opinion. And I think that's what we can hopefully pull out of those goalkeepers via us, the goalkeeper coach. I love that, man. And the piece that you use that I, I use a lot as well is you ask questions. It's, I think sometimes people, some people, a lot of people just don't like, don't be, don't like to be told what to do. Just as natural. For me, it is. Let me rephrase. Someone comes in here and says, Eric, do blah, 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 blah. Whereas if they say, hey, Eric, what are your thoughts on that? And I say, like, hey, it's almost like it's my idea. But from a, from a really good coaching perspective, they got me to do it. But they, they got what the result they were looking for. But they didn't tell me to do it. They made it think it was my idea. Right. Those are great coaches because they're always putting the thought process through the goalkeeper and letting them implement ideas that the coach is kind of telling them what to do or giving them enough rope to make that decision to do those things, even though they're not directly telling them what to do. Plus – that thought process, they need to think alone. Like they need to be able to make these decisions and analyze situations and make decisions on their own without always being told what to do. And I think sometimes you can run into when a goalkeeper is doing that, a 19 year old, let's use that example. 19 year olds talking to a veteran, a 28, 30 year old right back. So there could be some, and, and correct me please if I'm wrong, I'm sure I am. Is there, is there sometimes egos? Are there butting of heads? If so, what do you say to that 19 year old when they're getting, so let's say, a, a, the crack of the whips coming back at them from a field player. Um, Todd, what would you be your advice on something with, with a goalkeeper? I've had situations multiple times, you know, happen, things like that. And it's hard for that 19 that, or that young pro to take it, you know, especially if it's coming from a senior pro, you know. But, you know, I'll basically look at him and say, hey, you know what? You might be right. You might be the, the, the person that's right in that situation, but you have to take it. And the reason is you've got to also gain the respect of that senior pro. And if all of a sudden they say something to you, whether they're right or wrong, and you come back with them, regardless what you say, but you've got a very combative tone, tone huh, you're never going to gain the respect of that pro. So there's going to be a time where you're going to need them and you need them in your corner. And they got to know that you're going to fight for them and, you're going to f and they're going to fight for you. And you got to have that, t that kind of leeway. They've earned the respect because they've been there for a long time and now they are the senior pro. And you just kind of put your hand up. That's the thing I mentioned before. You put your hand up. Yep, sorry, my bad. Not going to happen again. You learn from it and you move on. And you kind of, you pick and choose those moments when you do say something and the times with a senior pro that you just, okay, got it. Understood. I, I, the whole failure thing to me is amazing. Like learn from it. You know, and, and I think kids sometimes get down. Coaches, egos get down. The screaming, you know, players. And it's a great coaching opportunity. And it's the failure is the, is the opportunity to start over with some experience.
right? Like now you're, you, you learn from it, you move on, same situation. Hopefully you react differently. Um, but I think that starts with the coach. And I think that also starts with the goalkeeper in particular, because they are that relationship manager on the field amongst their team. Matt, I'm going to put the same question at you from an academy level. Kid moves to a new team. You know, the, the, the number one gets, gets hurt. The new number two comes on, who doesn't get much time. And they're instructing and they're looking, they're setting up a wall. And some players just aren't listening to them. From a leadership perspective, what are you saying to that goalkeeper to get that, that role, that, that, to have them continue to do it in a very interesting situation? Yeah, if we're talking at the younger levels there, I would, my piece of advice would be to just not give up with it, uh, to keep communicating. Um, and if in a sense, can we just be even louder um, to, get, to get our point across? Because um, that's kind of an interesting situation. Um, obviously with kids, you know, unless you do have one that has that big personality, you know, that can be a tough transition going to a new team, especially to be in the goalkeeper uh, position too because that's a huge part of it is to communicate with your teammates in front of you so if you don't know how the other players in front of you play if you don't even know their names that's at a huge disadvantage right off the bat um, but I think it's just a matter of being consistent with it uh, I think that's part partially I mean this is probably another conversation but where the coach's role comes into that as well with dealing with the new player um, but if you have somebody that is new into the goalkeeper position for your team can be a tough transition, but I, my piece of advice would be just keep consistent with your communication. Can we be even louder? And can we just try to uh, make ourselves buddies with the guys as quickly as we can? Um, you know, because that's just going to help the personalities on the field as well, and um, ultimately just help our team the best it can. Because if we're in that awkward phase where we don't know names and we don't not going to talk to each other, then that's just going to hurt us. And um, when, when we're playing on the field. Yeah. What, Todd, would you add to anything there? Um, I think the only thing I would add is, you know, I would probably have that conversation with that new goalkeeper uh, coming in is just do what you're good at. You know, you're here for a reason. Do the things you're good and don't try to get do something special that's maybe kind of out of your wheelhouse. And, and that's, that's kind of our tendency sometimes. You get into a new situation and you want to prove so much of what yeah. you can and can't do and you try too hard, you know. And I think that's the conversation I have with them. Just – just be yourself, go out and earn the respect for everybody and just do the things that you're good at. From a coaching perspective, do you set, do you set them up to succeed by having words with the team as a, as a whole when, in, when bringing in a new goalkeeper in particular? Because that can be a very intimidating situation for, for a younger goalkeeper. Uh, do you, what do you, what do you, how do you address the team in that regard from a coaching standpoint? For, for me? Yeah. Or, it, or to Matt. For myself? For you, sorry, yes. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't do too much. Um, you know, if players ask me, you know, at this level, you know, a lot of times we're bringing in a new goalkeeper, which we just brought in one, you know, this offseason. You know, I'll get questions from players. Um, most players at the pro level, they're, they're, they're savvy enough if they see, okay, so-and-so has been signed. They're on Google and they're, they're doing the research themselves. And they, or if they're coming from in league, they, they kind of know who they are. They kind of know what they're getting. So we don't do too much big intros. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. They, they kind of acclimate themselves. Um, you know, we might do a brief intro and that's really about it. And then they just go about their work and they, and, and then they're, they're earning respect from their peers, the way they, they act in the locker room, outside the locker room, and then their performance on the field as well. Nice. Nice. One, one phrase I've been, you know, a lot of this has been based on communication and relationship. We continue to go back to that. That seems to be um, the, the main characteristics that we ref are referring to. And one thing I say to my younger goalkeepers and the team too, is when you're communicating, think of it like you're giving answers to an open book test and the whole team's taking the test and you're able to communicate what the answers are. But if you see a whole playing tight D and your outside back is out here, you got to push them back in so they technically or tactically, excuse me, are on the same page with everybody else. They might not see that they're doing that. So if you can support them in that role, I mean, it's just an easy way to really get your players on the same page. Hey, I'm giving you answers to a test. Kids look at that sometimes like, all right, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Keep, keep telling me the answers. I want to do a hundred. I want to get a hundred on this with everybody. Um, yeah, Neil, cool. The one thing I would add to that, Eric, as well, and this, this was a, something I was, I learned at a really, really young age and I think all of us have played with players in front of us that might be older than us, have a bigger resume. Uh, they might be intimidated by because they're like this big name. 
And I remember being a young player, you know, my first couple of years as a pro and playing with a guy that had a massive, massive resume, played in the World Cup. And, and I was intimidated, you know, and as a goalkeeper, I was intimidated. I was almost afraid to give him information. He was older than I am. He had a bigger resume than I am. And it was just like, I don't really want to say too much to him. And I remember him vividly turning around to me one day and say, you have got to give me information. He's like, I put my pants on the same way you do. He's like, your job is to instruct me. I can't do my job if you're not giving me information from behind. And it was at that moment I was like, you're right. You're right. Regardless who you are, you get up in the morning the same way I do. You know, you go to the same locker room, we go to the same field, and your job, your primary role is to give me information so I can make my decisions and do the best that I can possibly be. And from then on, it was like, okay, I don't care who's in front of me. I don't care how old they are, what their resume is. My job, I have to be able to do. And a big key to that, you know, and that's, that's a leader. That was him being a leader to me and showing me how to lead. And it was at a young age, it, was, it made a huge impact on me. It's amazing how those little moments you remember. You know what I mean? Like someone just kind of turned to you and an older statesman, a spokesman on the team turned and said to you in game, you got to lead more. You know, you know, and that, and that, that's what I need. So do it. Like, ah, okay. <laughs> like, I think that vote of confidence is sometimes that's, that's great. That's great to hear. I love hearing stories like that. Um, last question. Then we're going to wrap up. We have about 10 minutes left just from an FYI standpoint. Matt, I want you to, I want you to speak to mentorships and how that can benefit um, goalkeepers, younger goalkeepers, and how they can lead. Let me ask, is are you talking in terms of a coach or older player? Or you... Another player, yeah. So let's say you have a goalkeeper, um, you know, your goalkeeper union of three or four on a team. Let's use college for an example. When I say younger goalkeeper, I was thinking mid-teens, so to speak, but we'll speak to college. And, you know, do you set up mentorships with, with your programs? And, and if so, what's the value in it? And what do you see from a leadership perspective on the, the positives to that? Yeah, I think that – uh, something like that can be really helpful for everyone involved. You know, if, if you have, um, if I'm a goalkeeper and there might be another player within my club uh, and just say might be an older player than me, you know, that's someone I have to look forward. Uh, I have to look up to um, as a player and to help uh, myself grow even more as a player. So if I get the opportunities to train with that player, um, you know, obviously with goalkeepers, we have our goalkeeper uh, training, you know, if I get the opportunity to train with him or her, you know, that's, that's great for me to just learn from somebody else other than the coach as well, because they're doing the same things I'm doing. Um, and if it's a, if it's a player that is older than me, you know, I see that obviously their, their speed of the speed of play might be a little bit faster than me. If I get to see them play, you know, I see the things that they're doing, but you know, it's, it's a different relationship than, coach to goalkeeper uh because like i said you know they're doing the same things that i'm doing you know and i think that maybe in a visual way and in a learning way i get to learn even more from that mentor goalkeeper that i might have um learn more than just what my goalkeeper coach is giving me um because you know we're, we're more similar than what my goalkeeper coach might be to me yeah i i, I was gonna talk, i'll give you this in a second but i want to jump in real quickly um, I love it when younger goalkeepers come early and watch the older goalkeepers train or vice versa. They stayed late and they watch the, the older goalkeepers warm up and they have a mentor in mind. I remember doing it when I was a kid. I used to go watch the kids three, four, five years older than me. And I used to always put myself in their shoes. And I used to always think they're not doing anything different like that, that I'm doing. I'm just doing it at a younger age so I can get a head start on, on learning, adapting my game to implement what these other kids are doing right or wrong, but, but it's, it, it's really a good insight for me as a young GK to understand that, you know, they're not doing anything really different. They're just doing it at a higher intensity level. And Todd, you, we've spoken about this before, you know, Hey Todd, I want to hire you for some professional goalkeeper training or more advanced goalkeeper training. And what are your, what's your favorite line to that? What do you say? When you, when you find out what it is, let, please let me know. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and explain to that. What does that mean to, for, those, for those that don't know? Tell, explain what that is. Yeah, I mean, I treat all my goalkeepers the same. You know, I don't care if you're 10 years old or you're 40 years old and you're a 20-year pro. Uh, you know, I look at it pretty simply. Um, if that 10-year-old makes a mistake, probably leads to a goal. 
if the 20 year pro makes a mistake, probably leads to a goal. You know, we're, we're in the business of one mistake and we probably lose. That's just the nature of the position that we all chose. So if, if the punishment is the same for the 10 year old as it is for the, the 20 year pro, why should the exercises within that change, you know, or our training? Now, the one thing that will desperately change, in my opinion, that 10 year old to the 20 year old year pro, my expectation is going to change dramatically within that. So, but the core training exercises, you know, the movement, the catching, you know, your diving, all your your day to day training activities are going to be very, very similar. Uh, to me, the, the advanced piece of it is I might do, say, a footwork and handling exercise. The advanced piece is I'm going to maybe toss that ball to the 10 year old. Where the 20 year pro, I'm pinging them. I mean, I'm hitting them as basically as hard as I can that they're still having success. And then occasionally I'm going to get it to a point where they're not having success because they got to have that, that failure piece. So I'm one that it's very, very simple. And I've had many, many goalkeepers. In fact, very, very recently, you know, I was training some kids. I'm like, look, you're going to do the exact same session that my RSL guys did this morning. And they'd look at me like, uh, I'm not sure if we're ready for that. And then when we're done, they're like, that's what you do with your guys? Yeah, that's what we do. And then I, a couple of weeks later, I showed them some videos. And I'm like, hey, did you, guys, did you guys ever see these? exercise before yeah we did that last week i'm like okay so now you understand the same things you guys are doing i'm doing with the pros my expectation might be totally different from session to session from yours to theirs but the training within it's going to be pretty pretty similar once they see that isn't it amazing how you can just see their confidence just go up i mean just from that slight introduction to information the goal, the younger goalkeeper's confidence just skyrockets. And that honestly, I believe helps to their comfortability on the field, which helps them with that leadership role. I, I, I believe that firmly. And I, I love how you, you phrase that um, real quickly. I do want to get your perspective on mentorships and then we'll wrap this up. So Todd, can you elaborate on mentorships? Do you use it to use it at the Academy level? Um, what's, what's your, what's your impressions on, on mentorship? I, I think it's critical. Uh, I really do. You know, and any young goalkeeper, when, whether they're within our academy, because uh, we're, we're very unique here at our cell. We have the first team, a USL, and the youth academy all under one roof. So on any given day, an academy kid uh, can be coming in and training with the first team or training with the USL team or whatever. And every time one of our kids comes up to train with the first team, you know, especially when we had Nick here, you know, I utilize Nick a lot. I would say, look, pick his brain. The guy's been in the league for 20 plus years. He owns every record there is. Ask him questions. He is the type of person, and they're all scared of him. They were all definitely scared of him. You know, it's Nick Romano, you know, sits up on the top of the mountain, and oh my goodness, I'm afraid. But he's, he was such a personal guy that, you know, just ask him questions because if you ask him, he's going to give you an answer, you know? And, you know, another example was yesterday we were training, and our young 19 year old who's, who's part of the U20s. Uh, I allowed him to leave the session a little bit earlier because he's part of the U20 national team. And Tim Howard was going to be doing a guest talk for the, all the U20 team in, in a Zoom call. And I'm like, look, that's important. If you need to leave training 10 minutes early to go all, now go and listen to Tim Howard talk, I said, as long as you have questions for him, and I gave him a couple of different ideas of questions of how to deal with club and country, you know, and all these other different things, uh, I said, that is an experience you can't buy, you know, and having that mentorship and being able to ask questions, you know, and, and I do that with our academy at games, you know, and I tell them all, you know, when I go down, I'm like, look, I want you guys, if at all possible, because they all come to our home games, I want you guys to come and I want you to watch the warm ups and I want you to go right behind the goal, you know, so one, you're getting the experience and the ambiance of what the stadium feels like, but you're, you're seeing the intensity, you're seeing the way our goalkeepers come out and what we do you know, and how we do it and what's their mentality and what's their body movements like, you know, and what's their focus. So hopefully in a couple of years, they're in that environment with us. So now they've kind of learned and seen it and grown from it a little bit to what it's like to be a pro, you know, and I think that mentorship and asking questions back and forth is, especially from player to player is just as important from player to coach or coach to player. That's great. That's, I love how you do that, man. You're almost giving them experience by, from a fan's perspective, despite being so close to actually suck it in as a player, too. That's, that's awesome. 
All right, guys, let's, um, let's I'll give you guys a couple minutes to wrap up. Matt, I'll start with you, sir. Um, give me your overall impressions on leadership from a goalkeeper role. Um, what would you like to emphasize for people walking away from this episode today? Yes, I mean, we hit on a lot of different areas for uh, goalkeepers, both young and older, um, you know, inexperienced and more experienced. Uh, so I felt like we covered a lot that kind of rounds it all out. You know, how can I grow as a leader, starting with maybe my first goalkeeping training um, to, you know, maybe I'm playing in a, in a really big game in, in my college career. Um, so I think that when we – talk about leadership with the goalkeeping position, you know, as soon as possible, day one, you know, I need to be the best leader I can be, you know, in the training perspective, on the field, off the field. Um, I just need to be an overall leader in a sense, maybe an additional coach um, as, as myself being the goalkeeper. Um, so I think that the more of a leader we can be in this position, um, and overall, like off the field as well, um, that's going to give put ourselves in more of a successful position uh, personally uh, to help ourselves uh, in our as our role in the team um, and to help our team succeed. Um, but then you know it, it'll help me achieve my goals as well if that's going on to play the next level. Maybe I'm preparing to play in high school, college, or if I want to get into the pro game. You know, being a leader uh, should help me and assist me just be able to achieve my goals and step forward to where I want to get to. Thanks. Well said, Matt. Coach Todd, I'm going to end with you, sir. Uh, I think for me, you know, um, it's setting the tone, setting the example. You know, is that goalkeeper, you know, going to be the one that's going to set the example for every other player, whether it's on the field, whether it's off the field, you know, and have a confidence about themselves, um, you know, and, and just, just demonstrating, look, this is, this is the way it's going to be. You know, um, they're the first ones there. They're the last ones to leave. They're always working their, their best. They're always making sure they're eating the right foods. They're doing everything they need to be to be a good pro, especially in the environment I'm in at the moment, uh, and having a confidence about them, you know. And then, you know, and the last thing that I, that I think is very, very important is, you know, learning from your mistakes. You know, having, having the ability to learn from your mistakes. And if you do make a mistake, put your hand up. You know, you're the one that, you know, says, look, that was my mistake. We learn from it, we grow from it, and we move on. So for me, those those are the things that's really, really important for that that, that goalkeeper at, at any age. Yeah, and I'm going to quickly put um, a, a small twist on this and then end it, but you can take exactly what the two of you said and you can put it to anything, and I mean that, life lessons. You know, you can put it to a relationship with you, with your husband, your wife. You can put it to a relationship with your kid. You can put it towards – a relationship with your, your boss or your employees. It, those are just lessons that never go away. And, and the, I think the quicker in life you can learn it, you know, it's going to help you in every aspect of your life. So I'm, I'm huge. I love what you just said, both of you, and how you summarize that. Because it wasn't, if you just took soccer out of it, you could apply to what you both said pretty much to any aspect of life. And that to me is what separates a good coach from a great coach is when you bring those life lessons to the table. Guys, thank you for your time today. Maddie, always a pleasure. Todd, thank you, sir, for being on today. We appreciate it. We'll have you back, I promise. Sounds great. Thanks for having us. You're welcome, guys. Have a good day, guys. Thank you, everybody. Tune in for our next episode.